Previously on Engine in the Jigsaw, we've talked about software-defined vehicles, or SDVs for short, and how their approach to continual delivery of new capability through increased software content is going to completely change the way that we, as, as users of vehicles, drivers, passengers, will experience them. We also talked about diagnostic protocols such as onboard diagnostics or OBD and unified diagnostic services or UDS for short and also about data formats such as uh, ODX, Open Diagnostic Data Exchange that can be used to describe the diagnostic capability of a vehicle. But what might we need to accommodate diagnostics in the context of a software defined vehicle project? Let's go find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this foundation level episode of Engineering the Jigsaw Foundation, episode number 22, an introduction to SOVD, or Service Oriented Vehicle Diagnostics. In episode F19, we talked about Unified Diagnostic Services, or UDS, and how it enables the control of diagnostic communication with the ECUs in a vehicle, and provides also read and write access to parameters or data within the ECU. Additionally, we talked about how UDS allows us to interact with the fault memory inside an ECU, so to understand when an ECU is detected a possible fault has occurred and to retrieve information related to that fault. Additionally, we talked about the ability UDS provides to interact with the inputs and output hardware of an ECU. And we also mentioned that UDS provides the ability to run routines. These are special functions that allow us, for example, to set up complex mechatronic systems where an ECU has to be able to know the limits of the range of operation of an actuator. And of course, UDS also allows us to change the software of an ECU. And as mentioned, this is all based on requests and responses. And we describe these requests and responses in diagnostic data. In F15, we talked about the two kinds of diagnostic data that are in most common use. We talked about ODX and how ODX can be used to describe the UDS requests and responses from an external perspective. So from the perspective of a tester being connected to a vehicle. And in F15, we also talked about the AutoZar view of diagnostics, which is an internal perspective. So how diagnostic works inside an ECU. So for this, we have the diagnostic extract or DEXT for short. And of course, in the AutoZar world, we describe messages in the system description or an ECU extract of system description. In F16, we got into much, much, much more detail on, on ODX and the kinds of categories of data and use cases that are, are supported as, as, as well. So if you want to catch up on, on those concepts, make sure you've watched that those two episodes. Then um, in, in a number of episodes, we've talked about software in, in vehicles. And let's just have a, a bit of a refresh of how software in a conventional vehicle, so not a software defined vehicle, so a kind, the kind of vehicle you could have maybe even bought 10 years ago, 15 years ago. How does that software kind of work at, at a basic level? Well, most vehicle software that we're talking about in, in this context is hardware focused. What does that mean? Well, it means if we have a function such as fan control, then with this function, what we're doing is we're monitoring two inputs. One is a temperature sensor, and one is an input from the user for what they want the temperature to be. And then based on the difference between these two inputs, the fan control function will control the speed of a variable speed fan. So we have a, an input from a, a sensor, this is a obviously hardware. We have an input from the user. This will be gathered again via hardware. Even if it's touching a screen, the screen is still hardware. And of course we have the fan, the motor. This is hardware again. So this one function interfaces to three different kinds of hardware in some way. Let's compare this idea of software to the kind of software uh, that we see emerging in software-defined vehicle projects. So 
Firstly, of course, we don't get rid of the hardware in a software-defined vehicle. And this is, I must stress, just an example of how you can think about the software in a software-defined vehicle. There are other ways. It's just that this one works really well for what I want to say about UDS and, and diagnostics. So we have this layer of, of hardware that we need to interact with. And we then, of course, need the software like we have in vehicles now that allows us to interact with all this kind of mechatronics stuff. So we have a mechatronics software layer. Above this, we then have a layer that provides integration and local control functions. So integration, because we may be working in a zonal architecture here, so we need to combine wheel speeds from four different corners of the vehicle to be able to present speed information to a layer above. We also have some local control. And what this is, uh, well, what this means is our mechatronics layer, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. We never want to change the software in the mechatronics layer because the kind of software that we run in this mechatronics layer, the kind of microcontrollers uh, and, and operating systems just don't really lend themselves to, to very easy, frequent software updates. So we want to make this as simple as possible so we never have to change it. We start to bring in complexity, which brings in a risk of a bug in other layers. And the one where we most want to get a lot of change in is where we have our vehicle functions that use the layers below to control the vehicle. And the vehicle functions layer is where we add our functions. So this is uh, an operating environment where we want to be able to very easily update software, restart functions very quickly and, and simply without the overheads that we may be hitting that mechatronics layer. So the, the software that we have in this vehicle functions layer is really different to this bottom layer of mechatronics layer. And we have a lot of software focused software um, in this picture. So we, we have a mechatronics layer works with the, uh, with the hardware, but the integration, the green layer works with the, the blue and the yellow layers. The yellow layer works with the green layer. And also of course we have an offboard interface potentially. So we have backend IT systems that we want to interact with. And these layers are all linked together with different kinds of communication. So we have signals and low level services between the mechatronics and the integration and local control layers. We have services between the integration and local control and the vehicle functions layer. And we have a vehicle API, which gives us a, a data link effectively to our backend systems where maybe we want to run a, a digital twin. And we use these different kinds of communication mechanisms because they fit really well to the different kinds of software we, we have in these lower layers. And what we can say again, really important, is in this picture, we have a lot of software which really just interfaces to other software. So it's only our mechatronics layer that really has to deal with hardware. Everything else is interacting with software. So an SDV, we can also think in terms of how these layers um, can be kind of divided, we can think that we have some signal-based and some service-oriented layers. Now, signal-based is a, another way of saying event-driven. So a switch turns on and I turn on an output, for example, or a sensor goes past the level and I turn on an output of my ACO. Service-oriented technology is, is, is very different. So this gives us a property called loose coupling, which allows us to add software easily once the system is already configured and, and running. Whereas with a signal-based event-driven architecture, typically everything is it's almost kind of wired together using these signals. So we it's much less flexible and we get our flexibility that we want in a software-defined vehicle through this service-oriented vehicle function uh, and, and back end that we, we see in the picture here. So UDS works really, really well in the lower signal based layers. So the closer we get to hardware, the better UDS fits to the kinds of problems that we see. And unfortunately, the further up we go, the, the closer we get to the cloud, the, the more UDS starts to not do everything that we need it to do. And this is really important. So it doesn't fit as well to these service oriented layers. And there's two specific things that UDS is really um, doesn't give a good answer for. So if we're diagnosing software focused software, 
lots of soft words in that sentence, um, then there's two things we typically want to, to be able to do with the kind of programming languages and operating environments that we have running in, in, this, in, these, in these software oriented layers. So the first thing is during development, when this software detects a problem, it tends to generate what's called a snack trace. So if you know um, C++ or, or C Sharp or Java programming, you'll know all about stack traces. You'll have um, had to deal with them many times before. UDS doesn't really give us a way to, to access stack traces. And similarly, the kind of operating environments that we're working with in these service-oriented layers, they have file systems rather than a, a fault memory. So the software as it's running creates log files. And again, in the, in the case of UDS, we don't, we have kind of file-based access written into, into UDS as a standard, but it doesn't really fit with the idea of retrieving log files, maybe from a, a running system uh, as, as things are, are happening to, to understand what, what's happening in, in that system during, during its runtime. So there's these two things that UDS doesn't really provide in a, let's say, a comfortable way. So let's also think about how we would diagnose a software-defined vehicle with this kind of architecture. Because at the top here, we have this vehicle API. This is our way into the vehicle. And of course, this is in the service-oriented part of our architecture. So the vehicle API is usually a service-oriented access point. So we need to think that our access to the vehicle is service oriented in, in, in all cases. And this means that really we need a service oriented vehicle diagnostics capability or SOVD for short. And ASAM have been busy standardizing this. So SOVD additionally, because we use the vehicle API or able to use the vehicle API, then we have the ability to do remote and proximity diagnostics. So what does this mean? Remote means really remote. We no longer have to have a cable that connects us to a vehicle to be able to do diagnostics. So you can be anywhere. You can be on a different continent. You can be in a, a different town um, supporting somebody who's working in a, a workshop um, somewhere who's got a vehicle they can't quite work it out. Um, and this is, this is a, a really big difference. So in the past, this kind of remote access has always been done using proprietary systems. SOVD provides a standardized way to get this remote access. Proximity diagnostics means I am next to the vehicle, but not necessarily connected to it. So maybe I've got an iPad or other tablet-based device and I'm walking around in a, in a workshop, the vehicle's up on a ramp, so I don't wanna have a cable attaching me to the vehicle. I'm next to it, and maybe I'm directly connected to the telematics unit of that vehicle. So I'm not going over the internet, I've got a direct local connection, but with a wireless mechanism. So. Proximity diagnostics as well is something that SOVD provides a capability for. As well as, of course, we can plug into the vehicle and do stuff. Um, because the access that we have to the lower layers is also via the API. So if we want to diagnose the stuff that's going on in our mechatronics UDS world, we need to get to this via the vehicle API. So SOVD has to enable UDS bot diagnostics as well as the special stuff that it gives us for software defined vehicle. And let's just think about software defined vehicle again. We talked about expanding capability through adding software. And so we want to be able to add functions. And in the case of UDS, we talked about how UDS enables software update and of course, SOVD has to enable software updates in the SOVD service oriented layers. Additionally, every piece of software we add may bring with it new diagnostic capability or new diagnostic needs. So SOVD, we have to think in a software defined vehicle, we have ever expanding diagnostic capability. And this means that SOVD has to be self-describing or discoverable, to use some jargon. What this means, I no longer need an ODX file that tells me when I'm going to an SOVD equipped vehicle. I connect to the vehicle and at the point of connection, the vehicle tells me what diagnostics it supports. So we no longer have to work with the complexity of ODX. And the reason for this, of course, is if we're adding software dynamically, and updating software dynamically, a vehicle, when it comes into a dealership, could have had software applied to it in 
really quite literally the last few seconds as it rolls into the dealership. So there's no way you could prepare a file and deliver it to a tester in that amount of time. You'd have to be running a very, yeah, for every single vehicle you've, you've produced, just not possible. So the vehicles themselves can tell you what they support if they support SOVD. And that is really kind of the main content for today. So SOVD, Service Oriented Vehicle Diagnostics, enables firstly a fully service oriented diagnostic interface. It allows the management and control of software updates. It it also provides diagnostics tailored to the new kinds of software that we find in software-defined vehicles. It allows the diagnosis of UDS-based ECUs and components as well. And really interestingly, it provides a standards-based approach to over-the-air or OTA uh, diagnostics and software updates. This removes what's kind of known as vendor lock-in. So it used to be the case that to have an OTA system, you had to get the onboard com software components and the offboard software components from the same business because they had a proprietary connection between them. With SOVD, there's a standardized connection. So you can shop around, you can pick your preferred onboard software provider, and you can also pick your preferred offboard system provider, and the two will talk together through the standardization that SOVD provides to you. Just in the same way as you can buy a UDS tool from anybody and connect it to any UDS-based ECU. You don't have to have the, 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 the yeah, your, your ECU supplier doesn't provide you the diagnostic tool. That's absolutely not how it works. You have this ability to shop around and SOVD brings this to remote diagnostics as well. Really exciting possibilities for the automotive industry. So please visit our website for details on the support of service-oriented vehicle diagnostics across vectors, tools, and embedded software, because of course we support it. And make sure to watch out for future episodes of Engineering the Jigsaw, where we're going to cover more details of SOVD as well. Make sure to join me after the music if you want to send us any questions or to know some more. Really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. Make sure you, if you have, you give it a thumbs up in YouTube. If you have questions or ideas, then give us a comment down below the video. If you don't want to do it in public, if you want to keep it private, then drop us an email to our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. You can find a link to a web page with those contact details on in the description for this video. Make sure that you subscribe to get notified as we release new episodes and as Vector publishes its excellent and informative videos on its YouTube channel. Make sure to check out our playlists. We have our foundation episodes playlist and also intermediate level playlist as well for you to binge and catch up with. We'll catch you for another episode soon. Goodbye.